Okay, so we're working on doing a Python game in programming, and I want to look at one algorithm that what I think is probably the, the toughest of Hangman to do. And that is, how do you go from a puzzle of a bunch of dashes wherever there is a hidden letter to going in, let's say the user guesses a letter, and we need to, anywhere that letter exists in the, in the actual phrase the computer's picked, we replace that dash or underscore with the letter. How do we go and replace that and then not overwrite anything we've done before? Because, you know, the user's going to guess one letter, and if it exists, they're going to put them in there. And then how do we get another letter in without overriding what we had before? And, and it can be a little tricky, and we're going to use a variety of things. We're going to use... Um, indexing, slicing, the range function, the length function, and we're going to use concatenation, all of those to do this. So first of all, I decided to put together a flow chart to show you how I'm doing this. Now this is one example of doing a for loop in flow chart. Notice the arrows. We start with getting the user's guess. Now, I'm just going to assume the guess is correct, so there should actually be another decision up here is, is guess in the puzzle? or the phrase, I should phrase, I should mention. Because we have a guess, we have a puzzle, which is kind of like the puzzle so far, and then we actually have a phrase. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through every index position in the phrase. We're not just going to run through the letters. We want a list of index positions. So for each index position, we're going to check, is that guess, in this case maybe the letter L, is it equal to the phrase at that index position? If the answer is no, we go down here. And the question is, are we done at the for loop? Well, we've only checked one letter. And so in this case, it wouldn't. So we'd go, the answer is no. So we go back up here. And notice how we insert ourselves right in the middle of this, because we're now we're on the next index position. And let's say this time, that index position, which is number one at this point, is equal to the phrase at that index position. And the answer is yes. We go down here. Now, I've broken this out into three steps, but we're going to code it all as one. The first phrase is we need to, actually, I should have changed this a, a little bit. I should have said um, the puzzle is equal to the puzzle up to that index position. And then we're going to add the phrase um, at that index position or the letter of the user guess. They're going to be the same. And then we're going to add the puzzle after that index position to the end. So we're going to have puzzle before plus the guess plus puzzle after, build them all together as one string, and then we ask, are we done with the loop? Well, the answer might still be no, in which case we go to the next index position and we run through this again. So at some point, we go through all the letters, and anywhere where we have a letter matching the phrase at that index position, we build that puzzle. We basically rebuild the puzzle. However, we're using the puzzle that's been changed so far. And then eventually we're done with the loop, the answer is yes, and then we just continue with the rest of the program. So we're actually somewhere in the middle of the program loop. So let me show you the pseudo code that we have for Hangman that we've done so far. I'm going to move this over here. Okay. So it's, it's on part of the game loop here. So we're going to run until the number of incorrect guesses e equal to the maximum number of wrong answers. Let me expand that out a little bit. So when we're in the game loop, we print the gallows, we print the puzzle, we print out all incorrect guesses, and we get the user guess. Here we are. Now we're going to check to see if it's in the phrase. All right. So we're going to check to see if the guess is in the phrase. If it is, we're going to tell the user, and then we're going to add it to the puzzle. So in order to do that, we loop through the phrase, and any time the guess is equal to a letter in the puzzle, we're going to add it in that position to the puzzle, right? So that's where we fit in this whole game loop. Okay, so let's, in order to explain this, I've created another program that is going to show us uh, an example of Hello World. And we'll, we'll, code, we'll test it out in the Hello World program. Give me just a moment. I'm going to run this in Python, and let me change it so it fits where we're going here. So basically, I wanted to show you the index positions and the chart of the various um, places here. So go down here. So we're going to do an index. So I'm going to show you the index position to begin with. So if you look at the phrase, hello world, let's say that's a phrase the computer guessed. And at this point in the program, no guesses have been made. Okay. And we look at index position. We start at zero. We go to 10. Now, if we can just get a list of all our index positions, 
In that order, we can run our for loop. And there's where your length function is going to come into play. So if we get the length of this string, hello world, it's actually going to give us the number 11 because there's 11 characters in there. However, with a range function, it starts at zero, it counts up to, but it doesn't include that last number. So it actually will become zero through 10. Okay, so there's our index position. So let's say we're looking for the letter L. The letter L is in what index position? Take a look. So I ran this program. We tested the first index position of L. It is 2, and that is where we are. I'm going to say no on this case. Um, and just understand, look at the index positions and how we get this index position 2. We're going to focus on 2. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get a copy of the puzzle up to that position. Then we want to get that letter L from our phrase. And then we want to get a copy of the rest of the phrase, which will go to the end. So in this case, I'm going to put no, but I'm going to say I don't want to quit, and I'm going to get a slice now. So in order to get a slice of H-E, the first two letters, we use a slicing chart, which is slightly different. You'll notice 0 is to the left of H, 1 is to the right of H. So if we just wanted a copy of H, we would do 0 to 1. If we want a copy of H-E, we do 0 to 2. So let's go ahead and I'll demonstrate that one. I'll put zero there. Starting point is zero. Stopping point is two. It gives us the letters A, G. Okay, so the first copy of our puzzle is going to be up to the index position. So we're going to have the stopping point be the actual index position. Now, the question is, how do we get the rest of the hello world, but without that first letter L? Okay, so anyway, we want from this letter L to the end, Okay, and I, and I asked a few students and I made it painful for them all. And the idea here is we got the first letter L by the index position of 2. So we want a copy of everything after that L. And so we figured out that that would be the, a slice from position 3 to the end. But the real question is, how does, what is the relationship between that index position, which happened to be 2, and the number 3? And it's a difference of 1. So we would take the index position and we would add one to it. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. But let's test this out. So we'll do the starting point. Uh, we'll do another slice. Starting point is 3. Stopping point is 11. And then we get low world, which is all of the puzzle or all of the phrase after that index position 2. So we're going to have to combine and we're going to do a little mix and match to do this. Okay, so let me show you how we do that. Okay, go to the Python shell, and let's say that the phrase we're trying to guess is hello world. Okay, we know that the length of phrase should be one more, uh, it should be one more than this 10 here, so let's just go ahead and run it. So it's 11, okay, because there's 11 characters in here. Okay, so we've got length of phrase. Let's also do the range function with the length of phrase, excuse me. And we see now we have a list of index positions 0 through 10. So those are index positions. And this is going to be really important to run our for loop. Okay. And then we're going to do the puzzle so far. We'll just call it puzzle. And then we need a dash H E L L O space. Oh, wait. No, I need a space. Space W O R L D. And let's double check. We'll get the length of puzzle. And we see it's 11, just like the length of phrase. Um, let's see. Phrase at index position 2 is L. And then puzzle at index position 2 is dash. Okay. So we've got the phrase. we got the puzzle. And let's just put those one right after the other so we can see it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a for i. We're going to use i for index, by the way. For i in, and it doesn't matter, uh, we're going to do it in length. Oh, wait, sorry. We need range, length, and it really doesn't matter. We'll, do, we'll use puzzle in this case. Okay, so this is going to loop through each of those numbers 0 through 10. Okay. And I forgot to do something first. Let's start by getting the user's guess. Guess equals raw input. 
Guess a letter. All right, we're going to guess the letter L because there's a lot of L's in Hello World. Okay, we got that, right? So we've created, we've chosen the phrase, we have a puzzle, we ask the user for a guess, and now anywhere where this letter L happens to be in the phrase, we're going to stick it in the puzzle. So there's going to be two L's there, one L there. So we're going to loop through each index position. So the index position of phrase at zero is H, the index position of puzzle at zero is dash, and we're going to check those two. We're going to see, is that letter L in the phrase at that index position? So we're going to do a for loop. Actually, before I do that, let me just show you one thing here. Puzzle equals puzzle. Let's say we want to get up to the index position, which in this case we said was 2, right? Actually, let me just show you this. Hold on. Yeah, let's do it this way. We'll do it one step at a time. Puzzle from the beginning to the index position 2 happens to be this. We don't want to put any letters in the first two dashes. We don't want to put an L in either of those, so we're going to preserve those. And then we're going to add phrase at index position 2, which is L, which is the same as guess. So it doesn't really matter whether we insert phrase index position 2 or guess there. And then we want the puzzle everything after the L. So that would be puzzle index position. Now we're going to do the I plus 1, which would be 3 in this case. And we're going to go to the end. So it'll look like that. So what we're going to do is in our first pass, when we get to index position 2, we're going to put together the puzzle. We're going to put puzzle equals puzzle index position beginning to 2, which will be that one, plus, I'm going to put guess, plus puzzle. Now here's where we want the 2 plus 1 to the end. And let's look at puzzle. Notice that will put an L in the first index position. Then we want to go to the next index position and compare it. Okay, And there is an L in there, so we're going to want to add an L but without getting rid of this L. So we're going to repeat almost the same thing we did there. The only difference is we'll be at the next index position. Puzzle equals puzzle to the index position of 3, because that's the next one after 2, plus guess, plus, and it's going to be puzzle 2 plus 1. Remember the difference when we add 1 to it, to the end. And the second pass, or the actually this would be the fourth pass through, Notice we preserved the first L by this slice right here. That preserves that letter. And there could have been an H before it. There could have been an E before it. It would have preserved those letters too because we're just making a copy of it. Then we add guess right after. And then we add everything after where that letter should be. And you proceed through the puzzle that way. Now I'm going to set up a for loop to show you exactly how all this works out. So let me pause for a second. Okay, now I, I have done a really long complicated for loop to show you every step of walking through this puzzle. So I reset puzzle and then I set phrase to hello world. So I reset it like we're at the beginning and we do for i index position and range length of phrase and then we're going to print where i is the first time around. So, and we have to make that a string so we can add it, you know, here. So we're going to say i equals, it'll be zero the first time, then one, then two, then three, etc. And then we're checking if the phrase at that index position, this is the phrase, which is hello world, if that one is equal to l, in this case that would be the user guess. And actually we can replace that with guess in a moment. I'll show you just, just a bit. For now we're just going to practice with, with l. And if so, we do puzzle equals puzzle up to index position i plus the phrase at that index position. Or we could use user guess plus puzzle i plus 1 to the end. And then I'm going to print out where each slice is at. Okay, and we'll tab it out so you can see it. And then finally we'll print what the puzzle is at the end of that iteration 
or that one particular loop. We'll do a raw input so we don't have it crank through it so fast we can't watch it happen. And we're going to run it now. So at the very beginning, i is equal to 0. That's the first loop. That's why we printed out i. And puzzle up to that position is nothing. Phrase at that position happens to be h for hello. And of course, h is not the same as l, so it, doesn't, it won't add anything there. And then puzzle index position i, which is 0, 2, plus 1, which would be 1, to the n, happens to be all the dashes after the letter h. So, so far, we've made no replacements because L was not at that phrase. And we press enter to, to loop again. Next loop, I is equal to 1. We're on our next iteration. That's the number 1. Puzzle up to index position 1 is here. Phrase at that position is E. It's not the same as L, so we ignore it. And then everything else after it is here. So, the puzzle so far looks like that. I'm going to press enter. Finally, we get to L, and you can see at index position 2, phrase at index position 2 happens to be L. And then everything after it is there. So we get the first letter, and now we're going to loop again. Next time around, all right, sorry, I jumped too fast. The next one is 3. We add, there is an L there, so we add an extra L. Notice that first slice had the L. Everything after it is just one dash of space and dashes for the word world. We're going to loop through. At 5, there's nothing because it's a space. At 6, it's a W. At 7, it's an O. At 8, it's an R. And finally, there's the last L, and we're done going through the loop. So at this point, puzzle has three L's in it. Now let's run that for loop again using the, word, the letter O, since there's two O's in Hello World, just to show you how we can preserve those letters. So I have to go back up to Python here, hit enter once, and this time I'm putting the letter O. Then I'm going to run it, and we're looking for the letter O, H, then E. Focus right in the middle here where it says phrase I. The next letter is an L. We have another L. Finally, we get the letter O, and we add it. Notice we've preserved everything up to there. And let's go till we see an O again. Finally, at index position 7, we have another O. Okay, so you see how this is progressing through the loop? So it's only going to add a letter if it happens to be at that position. So let's look at that for loop one more time. And this is it with all of the extra writing in between. But let me show you how to do it by getting the user guess. Okay, so let's code it real quick. And then I'll show you the final code and we'll leave there. Basically, here we go. You get the user guess using raw input. Guess equals raw input. Guess a letter. We guess the letter E. And then the for loop is actually only three lines of code. For I and range length of phrase. If guess is equal to phrase, index position I, we rebuild our puzzle, adding the guess in between at that index position. We run it, and let's print out puzzle just to see. And there's the E. Let's run this again. This time we'll guess H. And then we'll run the for loop again. And puzzle now is hello. And then we can add the R, the W, the D. And you can see now that that's going to fill out. So really, this line of code, these three lines, it's four lines of code to get the user guess and replace any dash with that letter. Now, this works. If they don't guess anything, if they don't put anything down and they hit enter, it doesn't crash anything because we're just checking to see, is that guess equal to phrase at i? Well, if guess is nothing, it's not going to be equal to i anywhere anyway. So we can run the for loop, know that it's fine. And then we can run it again. What if they guess a space? The, a space won't matter because space will be equal to the space, and we're just going to replace the space with another space. So that's not a problem either. So no matter what we do, it's impervious to screwing up. And there you go. Okay? So now the only key here is this all happens to be inside of a while loop, and you need to look at all the other pseudocode for the rest of Hangman to figure it out.